thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to have another virtual Bible study of the Isle of Patmos Baptist Church located on the corner of 12th and Rhode Island Avenue, Northeast, Washington, D.C., where our pastor is Bishop Calvin L. Matthews. Come and hear what thus says the Lord through our pastor, Bishop Calvin L. Matthews. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you once again, Lord, for allowing us to come before you to give you the glory, the honor, and the, and, and the grace, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for salvation, sending your only begotten Son here to take our place of sin, to die for us that we may have a right to the tree of life. Lord God, we just thank you for loving us so much. We, we thank you, Lord, and we pray that your Spirit will Lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that we should go, and that your spirit will come and minister to us as we read your word, as we hear your word. Let us receive your word in our hearts and go out into this world and share what Father said. You may get the glory, Lord God. They may call on you to be saved. We ask you, Lord God, this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Only a look at Jesus. Yes, the one that died for all of our sins, that we may have a right to the true life. Amen. Today, we are in the New Testament book of Galatians, chapter 3. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be in Galatians, chapter 3. I have the New International Version of the Bible in front of me. Some of us know it as the NIV. But uh, as I said, that's Galatians chapter 3. I will start, and, and, and just to talk about Galatians chapter 3, what, what we noticed back in chapter 2, 1 and 2, uh, where Paul answered the first charge. He was an apostle sent by Jesus Christ. Now he turned to the second charge leveled by the Judaizers. They dared Paul to set aside the, the law which was given by God. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm going to start reading verse 1. First Corinthians, uh, Galatians chapter 3. Yes, Galatians chapter 3. Talking about faith and all works of the law. Yes, faith or works of the law. Verse 1 reads, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly betrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the Spirit are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you, have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in, in vain? So again I ask, does God give you His Spirit and, works, and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by you believing what you heard? Amen. Let me pause right there for a few seconds. Amen. Yes. Paul, as we talk about the Apostle Paul, Paul can't believe that the Galatian Christians had so quickly lost their way. They had traded the freedom of Christ for the burden of the Jewish law. He called them fools or idiots and wondered whether someone had cast a spell on them. Now, the key question is, the key question is, did they receive the Holy Spirit by following the law or by receiving the gospel? And if keeping the law can achieve salvation, why did Jesus die on the cross? The answer is, of course, that they had come to a spiritual life only through the death of Jesus and faith in the gospel. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 6. Let me read verse 6. 
So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations would be blessed through you. So, those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Amen. Let me pause right there. Abraham, the man of faith. And Paul pointed to Abraham. He was saved by faith. Yes, Abraham was saved by faith. And you can find that in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Look it up. Be like the Bereans. Look it up. The principle of faith that brought Abraham's salvation is the same faith that Paul talked about when he preached the gospel to the Gentiles. Yes. Being right with God does not come by keeping the law. Being right by God does not come by keeping the law. There was no law during Abraham's time. Being righteous come from God's gift to us when we believe on Him. Amen. Amen. Let me go. Let me read chapter 10. Moving on. Chapter 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. First Gal Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 reads. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, Curses everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hey, yeah. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by, be by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through, Jesus, through, through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let me pause right there for a few more seconds. As you see, Paul quoted the testimony of the Scripture. The law brings a, the law brings a curse, not life. The law of Judaizers accused, the, the law, the Judaizers accused Paul of abandoning Testify that the righteous will live by faith. Jesus Christ experienced the curse of the law for us when he died on the cross. Jesus' death was a redemption, a purchase that delivers us from sin. The death of Jesus Christ was for the purpose of making the blessings that came to Abraham available to all. So that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Amen. Amen. Okay, moving on down to verse 15. Talking about the, the law and the promise. The law and the promise. The verse 15 reads. Brothers and sisters, let me take, let, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. Yes, this. so it is in this case. Verse 16, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but, but, and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside covenant, the covenant previously established by God and, through, and, and, and thus 
do away with the promise. Okay? Let me read that again. Verse 17. What I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise? For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it is no longer depends on the promise. But God, but God in His grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. Amen. Amen. Let me pause again. Pause again. Abraham's Abraham's faith came in response to an unconditional promise made to him by God. The law was introduced about 430 years after the promise was made. The law could not replace or set the promise aside. Paul pointed out that the seed mentioned in Genesis chapter 12 verse 7 is the work of a single group. The promise is fulfilled in Jesus Christ and all who believe to on him, to him. Yes. That promise is fulfilled in Jesus Christ and all who believe to him. Verse 19. Moving down to verse 19. Help us, Lord. Why then was the Lord given at all? Mm. It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But Scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. Amen. Amen. Stay with us now. Let me pause right there. Let me pause right there. Paul highlighted, the fact that the law is unrelated to life. The law was added because of transgressions to reveal the sinfulness of sin. And, 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 and like I said, you can be like the Bereans and find that in chapter in, in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19 through 20. The law shows us our sin. Yes, that's what the law does. Shows us our sin. The law has always related to sin, not righteousness. Okay? The law has always related to sin and not righteousness. Verse 19 points out that the law was always intended to be temporarily. It was introduced long after Abraham and passed away with Jesus. The object of the Abrahamic promise appeared. The promise imparts both life and righteousness, while the law can impart neither. No. The promise is greater than the law. Okay, moving on now. Chapter verse 23. Yes. To my children of God. I pray that we all are. Verse 23. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male 
and female. For all, for you all. One, for, for you are all one in Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Amen. That concludes the reading of Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 through 29. And as, as it says there, there is no distinction in God's sight between Jews and Gentiles, male and female, and slave and, and, or freemen. Salvation is offered to all. Yes, salvation is offered to all believers who are the true descendants. But believers are the true descendants of Abraham and heirs to the promise God made to him. All the law accomplished was to make the world aware that man is a prisoner a prisoner of sin and to turn his eyes to Christ. Only a look at Jesus. Amen. Being aware through the law of our de desperate condition, some at least might seek justification by faith. Now that faith has come with Jesus, the law is no longer in charge of us. Amen. Men, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are not under the law. It has no reign over us. Jesus does. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, once again, we thank you for your word, Lord, that you inspired men to write for our here over thousands of years ago. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true. Your word is will stand forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but your word, your word, God, will stay forever. And we thank you, Lord, that we can hear your word, that we can embrace your word, that we receive your word, and, and, and let your word just reign in our hearts, Lord, that we may go out and love others, to help others. Encourage others to seek you. Yes, Lord, to seek you that they may be saved. Or just to encourage them to have a closer walk with you, Lord. A closer relationship with you, Lord God. Lord God, just help us to help others. Lord God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you so much. We thank because it's healing in your word. It's health in your word. It's shelter in your word. Lord God, there's everything in your word that we need. So Lord, we just thank you for your word. We pray that we hear more of your word as we are here. And Lord God, we ask you this prayer. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Only a look at Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Lord. Only, only a look at Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Turn us away from our sin. I thank you, Lord. 